guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mask making sessions. We are up to week number 204, would you believe? I'm just going to adjust my camera because already I feel like it's slipping down. Uh, so for those people who watch my channel, you'll know that we're doing the reruns and yep, we are rerunning week number four. We're rerunning week number 104. So we're doing week number 204. So, and what are we making this week? We are making policy envelopes. So, what are you going to need if you want to craft along? I have bought along principles. Now, I do say this every single week, but I'm just going to repeat myself again. I have bought along principles because that's what I predominantly have. You do not use uh, need to use principles. You can use whatever papers you have. Um, I would recommend personally using something slightly thicker. So, maybe scrapbook paper or something if you've got that. Um, book pages if they're thicker, sheet music again if it's thicker. I personally wouldn't really make these using copy paper thickness or very thin book pages. That's just my personal preference. Um, but again, you must kind of you know use what you. Whoops! I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to adjust my camera and get it from you know from keep slipping down. Um, but you must use obviously you know whatever you kind of find works best for you. So I've got scissors. I've got my paper. Now, mine is 210 GSM. Now, I've tried to ensure that most of this is double-sided. And as I say that, the first couple that I choose are not double-sided. But most of it is double-sided. Um, and you will see why, obviously, once we get making these. So that's my papers. Um, I've got a bunch of ready-punched um, circles. Now, these are one-inch circles. They are, again, these are 180 gsm kind of card slash paper um i quite like them in this craft colored card but i have got one or two in coffee dyed card you know whatever kind of you know you like to use again i wouldn't probably use um you know paper thick circles i would use something a bit thinner so i've got my circles i've got my scissors i've got my paper i've got my glue Again, I always use the Anita's Tacky Glue when I'm gluing paper, um, but, you know, whichever glue that you find best. I've got a dried wipe just for, you know, pressing my my glue out, you know, and catching any excess glue. I've got my, um, you know, old gift card or, you know, whatever cards that you like to use as your glue spreaders. Um, and then what I've got is I've got some Baker's Twine here. Now, I was lucky enough to receive a whole bunch of Baker's Twine from the lovely Michelle who runs our Facebook group. So, Michelle, if you catch this video, I just want to say thank you so much. I am so thrilled because, um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't, who doesn't love kind of Baker's Twine? So thank you so, so much. And I've got such a huge variety of colours here. And then what I've got, now I've got my cropper dial to make the holes in my circles. And all of this is going to make sense, obviously, once we get making one. So if you're thinking, wow, she's got a lot of stuff today, it's, it's not as complicated as it looks once we get making. So I've got my cropper dial to make my holes. And then I've got some brads here. And again, I was actually gifted these brads from the lovely Michelle. Now, the reason I'm using my cropper dial, oops. The reason I'm using my cropper dial to make the holes is you can probably see my kind of stems on my brads, they're quite big. So a pokey tool, a pokey tool is um, a little bit just tedious because I have to kind of like wiggle it around quite a bit to make the hole big enough. So I'm just going to probably make my holes with my cropper dial for my brads. Um, then aside from that, I've got my uh, blendy tool and my uh, distress oxide there. Mine is the walnut stain. I tend to kind of flick between walnut stain and vintage photo just depending on what I kind of lay my hands on really. Um, so yeah that's kind of pretty much all you're going to need. So like I say it's a bit like a recipe when you go to a recipe book and you think oh my goodness that recipe's got loads of ingredients. Sometimes when you actually then look at the recipe it's not as involved as it you know as it first appears so please don't be put off by all the different things that I've got here so I'm going to move that all out the way um right now I did do a video recently doing some different ways to make policy envelopes um so I'm going to show you both methods I'm going to show you my what I would call my original method what you know I made them originally um and then I'm going to show you obviously my <laughs> what I would call my new and improved and by that I just mean my new and simplified method because I sometimes find policy make policy envelope making a little bit um 
uh, tricky, I suppose. So yeah, you know, obviously kind of you can make them whichever way then that you that you fancy. So I'm just going to take <clears throat> some paper and we will just go in and make one first of all. So this is my French collection papers on one side and it is backed with my tea collection papers on the other side. I will try and remember to tell you guys which papers I'm using because I know that, you know, lots of you do like to know the papers that I'm using. So to make them in the, you know, what I would call the traditional way. So my original way that I used to always make them in. Now, my printer hasn't quite printed this borderless. For some reason, when I print using this quite thick card, my printer doesn't always like it. So I think it depends how, how dirty my printer is. If it needs a bit of a clean, I think it's more temperamental. So I've just cut that slither off. Now I'm going to then take my you know, my base, what's going to be my policy envelope. And I'm just going to fold it in. Now you'll see why this is double-sided in a minute or why it works best double-sided. So I'm going to fold this side in like that. Again, I'm going to just use my scissor handles to squish my piece of paper. Okay, then I'm going to take my other side in to meet that side, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to fold it in like this. Okay, so squish that one down like that. Now, I personally find it easiest to then, you know, for the trimming down, take my piece of paper and mark it like this. Now, this is my quick and easy method for getting my paper trimmed down. Okay, I'm not saying this is going to suit everybody, but this definitely for me is, you know, a quick and easy way to do it. So going to just take that like that and then I've cut my piece of paper down okay so that's my size of my policy envelope now what I'm going to do is I'm going to then judge how big I want it and when I say how big I'm meaning how tall I would like this so I probably want it really this top section so what I'm going to do is actually no take that back I'm doing this the conventional way so that's not going to work this is going to um work as my flap so what i'm going to do i'm going to just take this down you know how big i would like my flap to be so for example like that just going to squish that down like that okay now that's given me an idea of how tall I want this to be so then I can kind of chop this down according to how tall I want it to be so I'm going to have it kind of about this tall like that so again just going to squish that down like that so you've got a folded section top and bottom okay now I'm just going to cut this down here all right and then what I'm going to do I'm going to mitre those corners in like that Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this off here. That one and that one, and you will see, you know, how this is going to look in a second. Okay, so then these go in like that, and my folded, oops, my folded flap goes up like that. Now, if you've made a rubbish job of my it like I did, you can obviously then just, you know, readjust it and fold it there too to disguise any shoddy cutting so you know no mistakes in junk journals you can always just get around it so that's my bottom piece folded up okay so then what we want to do is obviously do similar with the top so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually take this and just cut it down and then I'm just going to cut it round slightly so like that. So, so I've just got a bit of a rounded edge. Now I'm going to then take that same corner to the other side and use that as a bit of a template. Okay. So like that. Oops. Okay. And then when I open my piece back out, I'm going to cut these flaps off. So these are the flaps that are going to form like the envelope opening. Now, when I cut these down, I like to go in and curve them slightly. Now, the reason why I do that is because then it just gives me a bigger opening 
to work with when I'm putting things in and out of my policy envelope. So again, you know, these are just all suggestions and things that I've found, you know, over time of doing junk journals of, you know, how I find things work best. Obviously, if you've got some little bits here, you can just trim them up afterwards. OK, so, you know, you can then just trim up your your rounded edges and things just to, you know, get it looking tidier like that. OK, and as you can see, that's why this works best if you've got the double-sided is because obviously you're going to see the inside of your flap so it's going to look a lot prettier obviously if you've used a double-sided paper so then all I'm going to do is glue this down on here now I like to run a bit of glue on the inner edge of the one that's you know on the bottom and then on the outer edge of the one that's going to be on the top and again take my wipe and just press that down like that okay and then obviously exactly the same here is just run some glue around that bottom flap like that press that flap up like that okay okie dokie that's it literally that's it so then what you've got is obviously your, your you know your policy envelope basic you know basic piece you're going to take your circles now this is my preferred way of doing these and again you know I've altered my way over the years and I'm showing you what I've found to be my my best method or you know my most simple simple method because I used to fiddle around with one circle and try and kind of like poke my brad through through here I mean that was near on impossible to be honest and just you know ridiculous or sometimes an eyelet or something you know it was it was not very easy to do so now what I prefer to do is take four circles okay and you're going to see why we've taken four in a minute I put them all together like I said I'm going to use my oops use my cropper dial to put my hole that's only because my brads have got quite a, you know, quite a big, um, you know, chunky stem or legs. Punch my hole through. Now, I have not done that very well. I've, you know, I've not got it through the centre, but again, it doesn't matter. So then put my brad through. Open my brad out. Press it down. I mean, you can see, you know, my brad's got pretty long legs there. So I'm going to just trim up, trim up the legs just so they're not showing oops showing out from my circle so like that okay press that down exactly the same with your other circle okie dokie so open your open your stems out and then again just cut your cut your legs down I mean your legs of your brads might not even need cutting down but you don't have to use um brads you know if you prefer to use eyelets that's fine too personally you know i'm hit or miss hit and miss with um eyelets so for me i think just brads are just easier really and that's it okay so then what you're going to do is you're just going to glue your your circles down okay so i'm just going to hold that down there with my scissors Oh, at this point, sorry, I am going to use hot glue. Now, I didn't mention the hot glue when I first said all the things that you would need. Um, I'm using hot glue because I'm doing a video. If I wasn't doing a video, I would more than happily use my wet glue. Obviously, because I'm doing a video, I just want to ensure that these have glued down very quickly. I don't want you guys having to wait for me to be, you know, pressing things down, holding them for ages. So, you know, if you haven't got hot glue, or you don't like using your hot glue, you definitely you don't need to use hot glue okay and then you're going to just take your baker's twine so what color what color baker's twine would i like oh, i've got a lot of nice colors to choose from she have some blue haven't even opened these yet so yeah the lovely michelle she sent them to me at christmas time and i haven't made anything using um you know using baker's twine i think since christmas so, oops, okay, 
so yeah that's going to look pretty so and again you can take your distress ink or you know your distress oxide and you can just run it over your baker's twine to give it a bit more of a you know vintage look less less bright more vintage so we'll just do that okay and then all you're going to do is tie this around your circle so you pull up your top circle you've got your bottom oops sorry your bottom circle is there wind this around your you know your between the two circles if that makes sense tie that into a knot then i like to tie it the other way around so like that to secure it on there okay cut your thread out like that and that's it and then you've got your baker's twine whoops which you then oh my goodness i'm so sorry oh really fingers and thumbs today i really apologize and you just wrap that round like that okay and then obviously trim that down and that's all there is to them and then of course you know you can distress ink that just around the edges you can decorate it you know make it look super pretty but that's all there is to those lovely coin envelope or policy envelopes and you know they're the type of thing that these were probably one of my favorite things to you know to have in journals when I first started making them but probably my actual worst thing to make because I found them so fiddly and just such a faff to make so I'm now going to show you my you know my modified version so <laughs> This is kind of the um, way that I made them recently in a video um, that you may or may not find easier. So hold on. OK, sorry, I had to just grab some paper off my printer that was um, still printing off that I wanted to make a couple of these in. So I've got these papers. Now, these are my new roses, um, pink roses collection papers. And yeah, I just absolutely love them. So I'd worked on these all of last week and oh, they're just so yummy. I'm um, yeah, really, really loving these. So I wanted to obviously come along and make something with these. So these ones I haven't printed double sided. And the reason being is you will see in a second, because this other method of making um, the coin envelopes, you don't need your um you know this bottom piece to be double-sided because you're not going to see inside it you're going to need your flap still to be double-sided so hence i've got a few double-sided things and then a few not double-sided so i'm going to just take these okay and again i'm just going to fold it in half so not not in half into the you know the size that i want so I'm just going to take this down like this and then again into here okay and then again i just like this method to slim my paper down to the rough sort of size that i want it and then i can just you know trim this whole edge off obviously if you want to use a paper trimmer that's fine too i mean i just i really don't get on with paper trimmers i yeah i find that they make me make more mistakes so for me personally you know i'm much better doing it like this now this method you can obviously turn it round. you see on this method our um you know face upside has got the join if you see what i mean so these ones your join you can either have it this way with the join facing you or you can have it this way so depending on you know how you want it really so i'm going to have this one this way around okay so what i'm going to do is again going to just fold what I want to be the bottom piece oops up oops like this okay so fold that and squish that down okay so you know kind of similar method to obviously what we used just now then you can obviously cut this down straight across like that Again, mitre your corners in like that. Now, this time you don't have to really worry here because, you know, unless you're wanting this to be your, you know, your face upside. But if you're going to have this as your face downside, then, you know, you really don't have to worry about being particularly neat here. So you cut your 
piece off the piece is going to fold down like that and this is going to glue up here okay so that's your your folded piece now so again just squish that down oops like that okay and then what you can do to make your flap and you know we've got a slightly taller one going on here take some other paper so here i've got some other papers which have been printed double-sided so i've got a whole bunch of different papers here so let's pick something that's going to look hopefully you know super pretty so i've got this one from my clocks collection we could use that as a complete contrast the inside as you can see it's my roses collection another sheet from there so it's going to really coordinate nicely so i'm just going to cut that down like that okay and then just place it here and then again because i don't like measuring or anything i find the best method to work out you know how big i need my sheet to be is just fold it into position so then i know this section here it's kind of the right width all right so i'm just going to take that down here like that okie dokie and then what we're going to do we're going to have this as our flap so i'm going to fold this piece over oops like that this is going to be tucked in to here and glued into there so i'll just squish that down like that okay that's going to tuck in here i might need to miter it to get it to squish in because maybe i've not been very accurate with my cutting so just miter your corners and that way it's going to you know to squish in so it's going to go like that and then you can decide you know how tall you want your policy envelope flap so i'm going to cut mine off roughly actually in line with you know with this kind of line here so at this point you could take your piece like this don't squish it you know and fold it but just kind of like round it and then what you can do is obviously cut it together like that and that way it's it's just a way of getting your your edges similar okay although to be honest mine did not work out brilliantly but yeah i think that was that was user error really but it's just a starting point anyway so then obviously you can you know you can go in and tidy it up like that so this is my clocks collection sorry i can't remember whether i did say that so i do apologize i did say that i would try and tell you which papers I'm using so then that goes down like that and this obviously is your your flap at this point obviously you could put a thumb hole in there if you wanted to or you know or leave it I'm just going to take this down slightly because again my printer's not quite printed it through you know 100% borderless so I just had a little bit of a white edge I could have I could have distress inked it but oh my goodness should have distress inked it because i'm not making a good oh my goodness can you see how wonky that is not making a good job of cutting this at all what was i saying about paper trimmers yep, bring in the paper trimmer oh my goodness that is appalling hopefully you will make a better job <laughs> any of your cutting than i have made here today oh never mind never mind right so again what we're going to do we're just going to glue this down I'm sorry I've got my glue here tipped up on my um hot glue gun because it's very cold weather at the moment um you know so my house is getting very cold you know overnight and obviously first thing in the morning and then what happens is my glue it I'm not saying it sets but it it becomes very temperamental so I like to rest it on my hot glue gun um you know tipped up and then the glue's kind of really happy to just come pouring out so yeah i mean it's it's a little bit extravagant but it's a good way to make sure that the glue's you know properly runny so again you might want to ink around yours 
before gluing it in. So this is probably the best time to do that because you're going to be able to get to this edge nicely. So again, just go around the whole thing like that. And then here, so again, you can obviously get to your folded edge that's going to be tucked inside. And then you can go around, obviously, your entire envelope flap like that. Okay, right, so we're going to then glue this whole piece and tuck it into our, our flap. So, oops, like that. Okay, so like that, press that down, oops, press that down like that. Okay. This might be easier to turn it over to glue it down. Again, open it out, make sure you've got the excess glue because you know sometimes you can find some glue kind of seeping out here. And then you've got your your flap there, which is really nice because then of course you've got different paper, which I think is just a lovely look. So again, then take your brads, take your circles and say, remember we used four circles, so one two, three, four, and then I just put them all together and then take all four together. Again, just a time-saving um, exercise, really. Put them into your cropper dial. You know, if you haven't got a cropper dial, that's fine. Use, you know, use a, a hole punch, although, to be honest, a regular one might have two bigger holes. Just use your pokey tool is, is fine. You know, I'm just using the um, cropper dial because, like I say, my legs on my brads, they're quite thick. And I don't want you just being really bored while I'm trying to make the bigger holes. So like that, and then cut down that one. Okay, again, squish that down. And then this one, again, go through, take my brads. And then again, chop them down. So one... Okay, whoops. And then this side. Okie dokie. Squish that down. Like that. Okay. And that's it. And then you've got your gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. Now, obviously, if you are going to decorate your, um, you know, your front of your envelope, then it might just um, alter where you want to put your policy closure. You know, obviously, if you're not really decorating it, you might like to have it in the middle. But if you are likely to, you might want to have it further up. So I'm going to just put this one further up. Just so that I've got plenty of room for if I want to put anything on the front. And to be honest, I mean, I'm not even saying that I'm going to because actually the papers are just, you know, very pretty and sort of fancy on their own. So, you know, it looks pretty nice without having anything on there, I think. So, yeah, I don't think it even really needs anything, but. So that's that. Then let's take some Baker's twine. So I might use this gorgeous pink. Okay, oops. Sorry, just dropping that. So again, just going to, oops. Ooh, if I can actually see where that's going through. Oh my goodness. Oh, I might have to stop the camera to get my baker's twine out. Oh my goodness, I cannot see at all where that's... Mm. Honestly, I mean, you know, you know when you start a new toilet roll? One of my pet hates is starting the new toilet roll. You know, like, not finding, you know, where the end is, because obviously you can see where the end is. But you know when you then come to unstick it? And sometimes it winds around the the roll doesn't it you know a couple of times before you get to like a whole square that's not then um you know tearing off that's one of my pet hates I really hate starting a new toilet roll and I'm a bit the same with you know the embroidery thread and if you watch my channel you may remember that a couple of weeks ago I went to stay with my lovely friends um who I hadn't seen since before lockdown and this is my lovely friend who got me into crafting in the first place and we were doing some crafting and we, you know, we started to make a journal and uh, ah, 
it was so funny because we had to bind it and we used the embroidery thread and it was a brand new one and I said to her oh my gosh do you have any tricks for how to un you know start an embroidery thread reel roll not roll but you know those the embroidery thread things and you know she made it look so easy because she just literally pulled the thread and it just then came out now I don't know what happens when I try and do it but honestly it all comes out of the thing and unravels and then my embroidery threads just get entangled on everything. So, yeah, these were going to be heading a bit the same way if I wasn't a bit careful when I kind of pulled them out. But there you go. And that's that one. So, you know, different looks, but they've produced the same outcome. So it's just really depending on which way you like to do them. So I'm going to, um, ooh, I'm not sure. Well, I might mix and, mix and match. I might do some of this and some of these. Um, but yeah, just kind of assembly line style making these. So I'll probably make a few bases like this and a few bases like this and then a few of these flaps. So we can just relax now and have a nice time um, crafting along. Obviously, I don't expect to get many of these made because they're quite, um, you know, they're quite a sort of fiddly type piece to do. So, you know, but I think they're worth the, you know, I think they're worth the effort. But yeah, they just, I would say they're a little bit... Um, you know a little bit of a faff to kind of make them so yeah I'm just going to start by trimming down some of my papers where my printer hasn't printed borderless so again this is my clocks collection papers and then on the inside that's again the roses collection and these I've printed two to a page on the clocks the clock side but I thought two to a page would be perfect for making these little policy envelopes you know they're pretty much going to be you know the right size they may be a little bit short and stumpy I'm not sure but I thought well let's give them a try so again this is the roses collection and then on the other side this is the French collection which to be honest I wouldn't have necessarily chosen to back it on there it was just yeah I'd printed a bulk load and didn't really pay much attention to what was printing on what what sides so I've ended up with things that I wouldn't necessarily have you know have backed if I'd have thought about it but anyway it's it's all fine so again this is my French collection so I'm just going to um take these and fold these in and then put them to one side so I'm going to just get my basic shapes of my papers cutting off you know cutting off the excess as my starting point and then I'll you know come back to these so then once I've done these you know that will be three that are you know at least the right size and shape so like that okay and again just squish squish those down like that like that so yep let's just take this up here Oops. so I might do all my folding and then do all my cutting at the same stage so yeah we'll just do it like this I think so these are I would say a little bit of a tricky thing to assembly line um, I don't know whether that's just me or whether generally they are. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Do you think they're a little bit tricky or am I just making a meal of it? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go in. Hmm, maybe I should go in here. Yeah, maybe like this. So, like I say, I mean, I just printed these off in a bit of a rush this morning. Um, you know, double siding a whole bunch of papers, and to be honest, you know, wouldn't have necessarily backed them with the things they're backed with, but anyway, they're still going to look, you know, look pretty, they're still going to be fine. But yeah, just in hindsight, I've looked at a couple of these and thought, oh, they don't really, you know, they're not the best match, but anyway, they're, they're fine. So, again, just going to take this one down here. Oh, and do you know what? I've just suddenly realised the ones that I had printed, um, you know, these small ones, actually, these aren't going to be brilliant for the, you know, the joined up ones, are they? Because, of course, they're too short. So, right. Now, this one, 
I want to not have obviously the bird's face so I'm going to have to use the top as my flap so I just need to be mindful of that and then make sure that I you know I'm cutting the excess really from the bottom if I want it shorter so I'm just going to go up like that I think okay like that I mean to be honest and again you could make a whole bunch of these all different sizes you don't have to then just limit yourself to you know the sizes that we've made them you could have you know quite tall ones and things that would be quite fun to do now this again you know i yeah i don't know why i've ended up with the strange combination of papers that i've ended up with but yeah again it's kind of like just what came off the printer so anyway i wouldn't have again necessarily gone with these but it's it's fine so i'll take that one like that okay um, like that. so yeah let's just relax now have a nice time and yeah have a catch up so i hope everybody's week has started out well if you watch my channel you'll know that i oops, generally film these on a monday to go up for you guys on the tuesday so I'm filming this a little bit later in the day. I've had quite a lot of things that I was having to do this morning. And um, yeah, it's kind of zapped my energy a little bit, I'm afraid. So I'm a little bit all over the place. Plus, I had loads of printer problems. I was printing off the paper whilst I was doing these other things. And I thought, oh, I'll, you know, I'll try and be really organised and get all my printing done ready for our video. Well, of course, it didn't really pan out like that. And I'm just wondering whether I might have it up this way. Because that's slightly more neutral, that end. Yeah, I think that will work. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, I was, yeah, messing about with my printer whilst I was doing the other things. And, oh my goodness, like, what a lot of faffing about I've had this morning with my printer. I mean, let me know below. Am <laughs> I the only person who seems to just have printers be, like, the bane of their life? It's all the time all the time I seem to have printer problems I mean touch weird you know oh I don't even like to say it but touch weird it's nothing major but yeah just just annoying stuff like you know I had the wrong paper in and then I was printing something else and it was like oh no now I've got you know got the wrong um oh, I don't know yeah just the wrong way up or something like that so yeah just just a lot of annoying things going on but anyway it's, it's all fine I've managed to obviously print um you know a whole bunch of things so it's not the end of the world but oh just sometimes it just drives you crazy doesn't it it's like oh my goodness i've wasted like hours and hours just you know trying to get a decent selection of printing so yeah just very annoying but anyway must not go into now just moaning mode so yeah it's cold today quite chilly um i don't know what the temperature is because i haven't been out since first thing um i mean to be honest it probably isn't that cold but i just managed to get very chilly when i went out first thing um what did i do at the weekend it was quite a nice weekend you know weather wise it was okay um i had a really nice nice weekend um i got invited to a well it wasn't really a party but you know it was an old school friend who i actually haven't seen since i left school now Oh, I'm 48. So, yeah, I mean, it's a long time since I left school. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess like, wow, 30 years, you know, 32 years since I left school. Um, so I haven't seen her since I left school, but she still sees another friend of mine quite regularly. So my other friend was going, you know, they were just meeting in the pub. So it wasn't like a party as such, you know. But she just said, oh, you know, did you want to come along? It's um, her birthday and, you know, did you want to come along? So I said, oh, that would, you know, that would be lovely. Right. So I've cut all, uh, I've folded all of those. So I'm just going to cut those now. And then we'll make a bunch in the other style. So it's tricky kind of, and it's throwing me a little bit because I'm trying to assembly line two different types in two different styles, which, yeah, it's, it's a bit much for my brain, I'm afraid. But yeah, anyway, so I said, oh yeah. Anyway, when it got to yesterday, of course, I felt a bit nervous, you know, and a bit anxious because, um, you know, I was obviously going on my own and 
oh, you know, obviously I had, oh, I don't know. You know, I didn't know what to expect. And you know what it's like when you just haven't really done things like that for a long time. You just feel a bit nervous, don't you? And kind of think, oh, you know. So it was just going to be in the afternoon. So at first it was going to be two o'clock. So I thought, oh, brilliant. You know, that's fine. It's, it's during the day. And anyway, then um, my friend messaged and said, oh, we're not going to go till four now. So I thought, mm, four o'clock, that's getting a bit late. I mean, ridiculous. It's hardly late, is it? I mean, four o'clock. But yeah, just psychologically, that threw me out because I'd kind of mentally prepared myself for the whole four o'clock thing. So at first I kind of said, oh, I'm, I'm not sure I'll come now. So I said, can I let you know? Anyway, I then kind of, um, I just did some more work and my son was, you know, washing his car. My daughter was with her dad, um, you know. So, yeah, I, I said to my, you know, my son, what, what are you up to? Like, you know, do you mind if I go? So he said, oh, I'm just going to be cleaning the car and stuff. So I thought, oh, going to go. So, yeah, psyched myself up and I went, and, you know, had the nicest time. I was only there for like two hours. So it wasn't like a, you know, it was no big deal. No drama at all. But, yeah, I mean, ridiculous how we have to psych ourselves up sometimes. And I say we, I mean, that's just because I'm assuming that I'm not the only person who does things like this. But, yeah, of course I went and it was fine. And, you know, then you're like, what was I even worried about? But, anyway, I had a really nice time. It was so strange because it was obviously, it was the middle of the afternoon and I'm so sorry that I've got bleeping coming in on my um, iPad. It's just my son. So yeah, it was the middle of the afternoon on a, you know, obviously on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and it was in like kind of a village, you know, about eight miles from where I live. And um, it was in the pub, like I say, and there was a Michael Buble tribute person you know tribute singer and I thought well how random you know what a strange time of day to have a you know a live singer that just you know, seemed really odd to me do you know it was so nice there was such a nice atmosphere in there and I mean obviously I don't drink so you know I'm like no fun whatsoever but and obviously I was driving anyway um even if I did drink I couldn't have drunk you know but I mean, other people obviously were, you know, who live locally, they were drinking. And so they were obviously, you know, having a lot more fun than I was and they were dancing and things. And um, it was just a really nice atmosphere. And I thought, wow, you know, because they served like Sunday lunch in this pub. And, you know, I mean, nobody at the, you know, celebrating my friend's um, birthday, they weren't having Sunday lunch or anything. But, do you know, I just thought what a genius idea, because actually that must be like a dead time, you know, for a pub. Sunday afternoon you know kind of people would eat their Sunday lunch and then they'd just go home and I just thought what a genius idea because actually what they've done is managed to get those people to then stay in the pub and actually those people then were having a lovely time you know some of them were dancing and you know they were obviously then spending money on drink in the pub and things you know and I just thought genius genius idea so yeah and I I said to my you know my friend who'd invited me I said you know, what a brilliant atmosphere in that pub, like so friendly and so nice. So I said, you know, because she said, oh, they, they have things like that really often. And I said, oh, well, definitely, you know, invite me next time because I have definitely come again. So, um, yeah, hopefully I will go to things like that again. So it's just a case of, you know, getting yourself out there, isn't it? And, you know, these things, they do take a little bit of... Um, I don't know, psyching yourself up, really, I suppose, don't they? Because, you know, it just, yeah, you feel a bit nervous when you've not done things for a long time. And, you know, I don't know whether it's just the walking in or, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, anyway, it was really nice. And it was so lovely to see, you know, to see my other friend, who obviously I'd not seen since leaving school. You know, we obviously gave each other a hug. I mean, we're friends on Facebook, but, you know, I mean, you don't obviously... You know, you don't get chatting necessarily on Facebook. So, yeah, we we had a hug and said, oh, my goodness, it, like, you know, not seen you since we were at school. So it was really, really, really nice. Oh, let's just concentrate here for a moment, make sure I'm cutting the right end because I suddenly remembered I had said I wanted to not not have the wrong end on this. Um, Yeah, so that was what I did yesterday. So that was really, really, really nice. 
and then you know I mean I left there by six o'clock so I was home by like 6 30 and I treated my son to a Chinese takeaway and um yeah it was nice we just watched a movie and um <laughs> I fell asleep by 7 30 but I'm just rubbish like that but you know I do get up you know pretty early so um yeah anyway just had a really nice time yesterday we'd taken the dog for a walk during the day um, you know, just kind of into the town where we live. We went to a coffee shop where you're allowed to take dogs. So that was quite nice. Um, yeah. Oh, it's so strange as well, because honestly, when I was at this pub, you know, during the afternoon, I mean, it, again, it was a pub that allowed dogs in. Obviously, I didn't know that at the time. And actually, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have taken my dog anyway, you know, in that circumstance, because, you know, I felt kind of nervous about going as it was, let alone then taking my dog with me but yeah it was funny because this other dog that I saw in there as soon as I saw this dog I was like oh my goodness I just want to go home to the dog because I then felt this overwhelming like oh my gosh I'm really missing Bo so yeah oh it's terrible honestly it's coming to the point I don't really like being apart from her <laughs> just awful 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 really sort of yeah just love being around her and you know obviously I'm with her all the time you know and um yeah when I got in my son said I said was she all right and he said oh you know she he said it took her a while to settle you know she was kind of looking for you quite a few times you know which then I felt even worse I was like oh no was she he said well, she's you know she settled in the end he said but yeah she was kind of you know just looking around for you a bit Oh, I felt terrible then. I was like, oh no, she's, you know, she's really missed me. So I thought, oh my goodness, it's coming to the point. I can't actually now go out and leave the dog. So yeah, need to get a grip really. But, <laughs> you know, your whole life is um, dominated by, by your dog then. But, you know, that's how they get you, isn't it? Because you just love them so much. I'm actually getting worried that I'm not going to have time to do any of the others. I can't actually see the, you know, see the clock on my phone, but I feel like I've probably been filming for quite a long time. So I might not actually get to do any of the other style at all. So I do apologise for that. But hopefully the, you know, the little demonstration that I did would be enough if you wanted to mass make a bunch of that style, that you would be able to adapt your mass making session to do that style instead. Okay, and then this end here. Okay. So, oh, this flap's going very long. Oh dear. Oh dear, look at the mess I've made of this. Just <laughs> don't know what was going on here. Oh, it's because I've been doing these other things um you know that I've been trying to sort some stuff out and so it's yeah it's causing me to not be able to think quite straight so I do apologize for my really shoddy, shoddy craft in here but right let's get rid of these big flaps and then maybe I will be a bit a bit more able to see what's going on okay there's um I am assuming it's a remake of the original film, The Colour Purple. Um, it's out at the cinema this week. I've not seen the trailer, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure it will be very good. I haven't seen the original Colour Purple, would you believe? I mean, I don't know how old I would have been when it came out. Um, yeah, I don't know, to be honest, whether I would have been a child or whether I would have just been, you know, at that selfish teenage age. <laughs> I'm not really too sure. But I don't feel like I've seen it. So, yeah, I definitely am going to try and go to the cinema to watch that this week and go with my, my kids as well. So, you know, take the kids with me because, um, you know, I think they would really enjoy it. So, yeah, let me know below. Have you seen The Colour Purple, either the original, which I'm sure you have, because, I mean, it, I think it did win a lot of awards and things, if I'm, you know, if I'm right. Um yeah let me know what was the original like I'm sure it was you know brilliant and then let me know or let everybody know below have you seen the new one now I'm just going to check how long I've been filming for I'm going to have to probably stop the camera so hold on 
Oh, I'm so sorry about that. That was just my mum and dad quickly. Uh, right, so what were we doing? We were just assembling our, our envelopes. So, yeah, let's just quickly oops, glue these ones together like that. And okay. Okay. On. And this one here. Where are we going with that? Oh gosh, look at my glue. It's like pouring out. Obviously, I've um, been downstairs chatting to them for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, they didn't want to come in because um, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I've got a bit of a cold, and you know, I'm I'm fine. So yeah, please don't worry about me at all. But um yeah i've just got a bit of a cold so obviously they didn't want to really come in and get my cold but they had to um just stop by because they were dropping something off for me so uh yeah i was just kind of chatting chatting at the front door but okay right. there we go right so I'm just going to literally glue these all together and then what I'll probably do is um yeah maybe we'll punch the holes into some of those circles and I probably haven't really even got time to put the brads in if I'm truthful because when I looked at the clock which must have been like five minutes or so before the door knocked I'm sure I was up to 45 minutes so yeah if I actually spend the time even putting the circles you know the brads in the circles I'm going to be way over time so um yeah what we'll probably do is well maybe yeah maybe put the holes in the circles or maybe not even do that but we'll just decorate one up now so, and, uh, you know, like I say, I mean, to be honest, they look very pretty. I'm so sorry if you could just hear my phone, or not my phone, my iPad bleeping again. Um, yeah, like I say, I mean, to be honest, they don't really need decorating as such. They look very pretty anyway. So I don't think really, you know, they need kind of anything much doing on here. Okay. So that's those. Like I say, I mean, done very abysmally. We've made four, which is pretty rubbish, <laughs> if I'm truthful. But let's decorate one up. So let's do this one, which is this beautiful pink one that I just oh, really, really, really do love. Now, I've got a bunch of pieces which are kind of fussy cuts here. So I'm going to use something from the fussy cut pile to decorate this but let's take our circles one two three four okay and just put my holes into those okay okie dokie yeah sadly i don't think i've got anything that i have watched or anything this week that i would you know report as worth watching so yeah tv's obviously been a bit of a shambles but yeah. Oops. I'm trying to think really whether I've done anything else worth talking about. Probably not, if I'm truthful. <laughs> My life is not that exciting. Uh... Right, I am doing, yeah, a restock um, in my shop. So I'm kind of in the middle of making and um, finishing off a few things. So definitely, you know, hopefully within the next few days there will be you know a restock on my shabby dabby doo -dah website so if you're you know waiting for anything or hoping for anything then hopefully it might be replenished by the end of the week um putting together quite a few more of the paper pads the printed paper pads so if you've been um you know waiting for more of those there are currently a few on there but i'm going to be making a few more you know putting a few more together um so yeah paper pads and um what was the other thing that i been asked for recently um oh do you know i can't remember now i'm so sorry 
just got a complete blank but anyway there will be you know paper clips the paper fillers um yeah all good stuff will be on on my shabbydabbydoodah.co.uk website and a massive thank you to anybody who has shopped on there i can't tell you how much i appreciate you know just your popping over there and kind of having a browse about um and just kind of bearing me in mind as a, a choice you know for your um you know potential place to to go shopping i really do appreciate that so thank you so so much you know it just makes it all all worthwhile so thank you right now let's just have a look so i've got these gorgeous butterflies these are from my new um light butterflies set that i've got on my etsy shop so oh my goodness doesn't that look yummy um i mean to be honest i yeah like i said before i don't feel like these are something that really needs anything too much because they are just you know very gorgeous anyway aren't they you know if you've used some pretty papers and things like that to be honest you know i don't think they really need kind of anything else on them um so i'm just going to put some of this lace on yeah i mean if you did want to put anything on i would definitely say just very minimal you know minimal kind of decorating needs to be done because they just look gorgeous as they are really don't they Okay. yeah now do we want this frame or do we think actually it just looks better probably with the i'm so sorry i don't know what that rubbish is that's you know keeps bleeping it's like the news notification and things like that so i don't know how you switch things like that off i'm afraid right i've got one of my perfume bottles that might look quite pretty on there so, yeah, perhaps we'll pop a perfume bottle on there. What do we think? Oh, do you know, I am just tempted to just leave it plain. What do we think? <laughs> I wish I could hear you guys and you could tell me. <gasps> oh, do you know, no, I'm going to put the perfume bottle on. Why am I so indecisive? Oh, drives me potty. Right, let's go for this. So, yeah, let's be adventurous. No point being boring, is there? no point whatsoever right my glue's really oozing out i'm sorry if you can see that huge pile of glue down there or pool pool of glue it's not looking very good is it but okay right okay right now pop these down so Right, move my glue. So this one. Okie dokie. Do it like that. Okay, and then this one now, oops. And I think we'll have um, the pink butterfly as well, because I think that did look really pretty, didn't it? So yeah, we'll have it like that. And then the butterfly, do you want the butterfly on the perfume bottle? I think that's really cute. Yeah, yeah, let's have it on the perfume bottle. So just pop that down there. <clears throat> okay. Oh my goodness how pretty is this looking it looks yummy doesn't it really really pretty and then i i don't know whether we could um get away with any bling to be honest there might not really be anywhere on here left to squeeze some bling but you know if we can try and squeeze some on here then let's let's try so maybe even just on the actual butterfly so let's see yeah, maybe just a little bit there on the butterfly. So I'm just going to actually put that on. Oh, what happened to it? Oh, no. oh. honestly, I'm really butterfingery today. I don't know what goes on, but yeah, just some days you're really kind of like, um, you know, clumsy. Today is unfortunately one of those days. So I'm super clumsy. Oh my goodness, hang on super clumsy so 
<clears throat> right. Okay, like that. Now, I've got this gorgeous baker's twine again that Michelle had also gifted me in this beautiful neutral colour. So, oops, isn't that just lovely? Really, really, really pretty, isn't it? So, oops, oh no, where's the end of this now? There we go. Oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? It was an easy one to find. So, I'm going to just. Do I want to ink it? Yeah, let's ink that up. Oh, where's my blendy tool? Okay. I mean, to be honest, it probably didn't really need inking if I'm truthful, but it does look pretty. This is a huge um, roll of it, isn't it? So, oops, it's going to last me for ages. So thank you so much, Michelle. That is so, so kind of you. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm always running out of baker's twine. Well, I say always. No, that's not strictly true. I seem to go through phases where I use it quite, you know, quite a bit. And then, you know, I've run out of it and I can't always get it. Sometimes the shops seem to, oh, oh, that's why I should have glued that with hot glue. No, oh, I'm going to have to glue it with hot glue now because I'm just making it move about. Um, yeah, the shops seem to go through phases where sometimes they have it and sometimes they don't. Okay. Right, just pop that down. Okay. Mm. Oh, hold on. Like that and okie dokie. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And let's whoops, tie that round up here. my gosh how gorgeous is that it's so pretty isn't it so yes a little bit of faffing around there at the end but isn't that just so so gorgeous so yes we completed three obviously you know these are undecorated but like I said before I don't think they look you know like they need anything I mean even if you wanted to do something you know very very minimal you could just put like a butterfly on or something you know just to just to finish them off or, a, you know, a little label or something like that. I don't think they really need need anything very much, to be honest. You know, they're very, very pretty just as they are. Like I say, I mean, if you just use some pretty papers, they're going to look gorgeous just exactly as they are. Um, so we did three, decorated one, made two other complete ones. And then we've got these three, which again, you know, just need to put the circles on with the brads and the baker's twine and then they're they're done so yeah not really overly successful today um if you think that we made six you know then um yeah not not too bad but not not great um but yeah i hope that you like them i hope you feel inspired and yeah thank you so much for watching i'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and i hope you'll have a fantastic week keep your eyes peeled for my restock video which i will definitely try and do later on this week um and yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you all have an awesome week and i will see you guys in the next video thanks then bye